<laughs> Welcome to the uh, Wednesday, November 12, 2014 uh, planning, uh, planning Board meeting for the Town of Raymond. The Board will come to order. It does have a quorum, and we'll start with roll call. Ben. Ben Crowder. Bill Priest. Robert O'Neill. Bruce Sanford. Steve Lenay. Greg Foster. And with us this evening is Danielle taking the notes. Jim Seymour, our town planner. Chris Hansen will be right back. And Stephanie for our ordinance review work. This is a, a public proceeding. And unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, you have the right to hear everything that is being said and to look at all of the exhibits that are presented. Please notify the chairman if you are unable to hear or to see. The board works for a public agenda and will be considering tonight's items in the following order. We have two minutes to review and then a review and approval of finding of facts for the Town of Raymond Communication Tower, the Port Harbor Marine Major Site Plan Review, and David Creep's minor amendment to, site, to the site plan, followed by some ordinance workshop and any planner communications. In each instance, the burden is upon the applicant to demonstrate compliance with the provisions of the, application, of the applicable ordinances. After the board votes on the merits of each project application, it will prepare a written note of decision because the notice of decision may substantially affect any appeal rights and also as a matter of courtesy, the board asks that those attending the meeting with regard to a specific project not leave until the board has completed its discussion on the project. Generally speaking, the appeals from adverse decisions must be filed with the appropriate appeals board of superior court as otherwise provided by law within 30 days of this board's decision. Also, to be certain that you preserve your individual rights to file any such appeal, you must be certain that this board records evidence of your appearance this evening in opposition and the basis of your opposition. All persons speaking, including representatives of the applicant and members of the public, are asked to stand, state their name, address, and affiliation with the project. You must sign in the signing sheet if you are speaking for or against the project. All persons speaking shall address the chairman. We will start with the minutes of September 10th, 2014. I shall move the minutes. Is there a second? Second? Oh, you have a question. I think we this flows kind of get backwards here, but um, on the second page, the third paragraph, it says Mr. Gray. That's all about the lighting, but it was all about the road. It was about making that the sidewalk into uh, a right into a road in order to get the frontage. That was the deal. And so my point there was that I wanted the town's attorney to say that what we were doing was acceptable. And think Jim had said he talked to the town attorney, she said it would be fine or whatever. And I felt that it was um, a stretch of the intent of the ordinance. So that's all I was asking for there was something for the town attorney to say that was the case. Now, it may be forthcoming, but it kind of get lost in all of that. Uh, and the, the rest of it's all right. We all said the same thing. We wanted to document it. But I was specifically asking for the town attorney to. Yeah, you asked to provide a letter saying it was in compliance with the driveway separation. Yeah, right. We have that? Do you want to propose a little something? A little change well, no, what he just said is fine. That's exactly what, we asked, what I was asking. Okay. It just didn't didn't come through there. Yeah, okay. I just put that right in there. There's an issue, an issue, and in essence, that issue has not been resolved. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Are there any other comments on the minutes? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of accepting the minutes and opposed? All right. Have been accepted. Next up is our minutes from the Wednesday, October 15th, 2014. I'll move the minutes. Second. Is there, Second. Any, is there any discussion on those? I have a question. On page two of the bottom, Oh, page three on the bottom. Conditions for approval uh, said shift the tower away from buildings and boundaries or provide letter from an engineer regarding the structural integrity of the tower. It Was that an either or? Or were we asking for both? You know, move, move the tower away from the buildings and 
get a letter from an engineer about the structural integrity of the tower? Well, my, my intent was to have uh, a letter from an engineer uh, explaining that it was a collapse design tower and not a fallover type tower. That was my intent in bringing that up. And if we have that letter from the engineer, then I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, if anyone on the board had a different interpretation or a different well, wish. Uh, I know. <laughs> I that's typical. That's what you would ask for in that situation. Is yeah. The, is the tower collapsible within the setback? Mm -hmm. But also, I believe the abutter, and when I asked that, I said, why can't you simply move it to the other side of that square? And they said there was no problem to do that. I know the abutter was wanting it to be moved away from his barn as well. And I didn't see, it. so I almost, I almost thought that was an and rather than an or. That they would move the tower to the other side of the that square oh, building okay. area. Yeah, we and provide right. a. They've done that. Yeah. I think yeah, they've, they've done, done that. that. Though. Okay, done that's. That. I think he said he was going to look at that. It's in. It's in the. Uh, it's in the. What's, yeah, it's in okay. the funny no. facts. So it, I thought I read it. That they had. Shift the tower away from buildings and boundaries. Conditions for approval. Yeah. Or provide or provide letter from an engineer regarding the structural integrity of the tower. And, and Greg, you're saying you think that should be in hand. I'm, I'm saying I, I don't remember which way it was. I, I thought it was yeah. and. I thought they were maybe really wrong. two separately discussed issues that related to each other. Right. Yeah. So I think it should be in hand. Not in order. Well, why yeah. don't you go? Why don't you go to jump to the findings of facts and just look at look at the conditions of approval for A and B? Does that cover what we what we think? Oh, I'm sure it does. Find it. It's the la it'll be on the last page <coughs> for the Raymond Communication Tower, where A says shift the tower shift the tower location to the southerly corner of the tower compound to increase the separation between the tower and the applicant's barn structure, and B is if the tower is within 100 feet of buildings or boundary lines, the applicant submit additional information regarding fall zones for this type of freestanding lattice tower. I'm reading the conditions of approval on the findings of fact. No, no, not nope. in minutes. Findings here, of fact. Here, take one. Maybe it's just the minutes. Just not right on it. Just the minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's just the minutes, I think. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I think, I think the, the 100 feet gives, yeah. because it's a 100 foot tower, so yes, I, I think that's, that's adequate. Okay, so then I think what you're, what Greg is saying is should be an end, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. so, it, so it should yes. be an end, Greg, is what you want. Yes, it's, it's okay. just the minutes that are right. different, Real that's all. That. Sorry about that. <laughs> 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 I don't know what to say, it was a, everybody was kind of going back and forth on it, so it was fine. I'll, uh, All right. Is there any other comments on the minutes? All those in favor? Any opposed? That pass carries. All right, we'll start with the review and approval of funding facts for the Town of Raymond Communication Tower. Conditions are approval then of the two that we just read, plus the third one is revision to the site plan as discussed, including changing the electrical service from overhead to underground. Um, we just need a, a motion to approve. Move that we approve. Second. Yes. Second, any discussion? Jim, I just have a question on number eight that seems to be page, the second to last page, the exterior lighting. I didn't prepare that. Oh, you didn't prepare that, did you? As Will prepared it as. Well, what's your question? Uh, eight says, um, 
The applicant's cover letter indicates one light is proposed at the meter bank shelter box. The light is identified on sheets five and six as well as wall light fixture. It is not clear from the plans whether the light fixture will be facing away from the Woodbury McDonald parcel or not, which I think was one of the things that came up for discussion. I think it's supposed to be a cutoff. Right. I think so too. Which is a wall pad. Which would be a wall pad. So it's basically wall mounted and it's going to have a 180 degree throw that's somewhat hooded down. No, that's it's got a full cut off of this wall pad. Right. That's my understanding. Okay, so I how we change that verbiage. So we need to change that verbiage to reflect that. <coughs> Instead of a wall light fixture, a, what do you call it? Well, you either call it a wall with, with full shield and fixed, with full shield. <coughs> with full shield? Yeah. So I don't know how, <coughs> how we sign this now. We wait. How does that work? You, it's just the language. Well, does all if you sign the last page, I'll just change the wording in it, and then it's kind of like signing a blank check for you. Uh, <laughs> you can wait until next time. I'm fine with that too. <laughs> all right. Do you have a discussion? All those in favor and opposed. All right. It passes. Next up is the Port Harbor Marine. So the conditions of approval will be uh, condition A is depict the approximate areas of boat storage and display on the site plan. Condition B is provide additional stormwater quality treatment devices and a new catch basin to enhance the level of treatment prior to discharge to the lake. Cut sheets and information on the proposed devices shall be submitted for review and approval. And item C is applicant shall provide documentation from the Maine Department of Environmental Protection that the project is exempt from stormwater permitting. Move we approve. For a second. Second. Mm -hmm. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Passes. Last up is David Creeps, minor amendment to site plan. Am I mispronouncing your name? Okay. <laughs> And there are no conditions um, for approval of this on this one. My name is the standard conditions. Yeah. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? I just want a picture of my Facebook page. I don't have that. All those in favor? That was just the. I don't think my hand was up. Yeah, they can't sign that. I did do this one, but I had it for 15. Yeah, I can pull it up the video. I think you just right. up an older one I had. That takes care of those. That takes care of that. So they can sign it, but they have to change the date on it. Yeah. Do you have a copy? We are to the ordinance workshop. You're up already. We're working, we're working on a record here, so <laughs> don't bog us down, Stephanie. <laughs> So, um, in the memo I've, that I that Danielle gave you, we 
I cut out things that we've already dealt with, so I've, we're left with two items. Um, municipal use, the definition of municipal use, and accessory apartments. Um, we can start with municipal use, and I think where we left off was um, we were, there was a question as to why the term municipal use was actually listed in the shoreland zoning land, ta land use table to begin with. It's not typically there, and it was added in 2000. So we did, uh, with Danielle's help, um, we found the planner at the time and spoke with him, and he he said that they added it um, to accommodate a situation with the fire station on 302. Proposal for the fire station. Um, it was added, I guess, to clarify um, that that was an allowed use um, with Planning Board okay, approval, and that was really the only purpose of it. So that kind of leaves us in a similar situation <laughs> we were in before, <laughs> but at least now we know why it was added. Okay. <laughs> so um, essentially, uh, it's sort of time to make a decision as to whether or not um, you want to add this as a definition. Uh, the potential is also there to remove it from the land use table and the shoreland zoning ordinance um, or table it next year. Basically, some of the issues that came up was, um, and, and I think uh, <coughs> Mary Costigan, the town's attorney, has talked about this in her memo, the August 12th memo. And she talks about the issue being that um, you're, rather than looking at um, regulating the use, you're regulating um, the actual owner of the use, or the applicant. Um, and this kind of creates a problem because you've got a list of uses and then you're, distinct, you're distinguishing a type of owner. So there could be an instance where you come up with a use that mm -hmm. is a municipal applicant, but it's an allowed, or at least it's a possibly a permitted use in the LRR one or two districts. Um, the other issue is that you don't have it, municipal use doesn't show up in your land use ordinance, so it's not actually um, in your, there's no definition for it as well. And so then the question becomes, well, should it be included in the land use ordinance, and if not, why is it being, uh, why is it a distinction in your shoreland zoning ordinance and not your land use ordinance? Um, I don't know if you want me to give an opinion on this or, you know, recommend, make a recommendation to the board or if you want to have some discussion. We would love to hear your opinion, Stephanie. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I hope you're ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, reading what the town attorney is, has said, I think it's dangerous um, waters, and, and I, I think that there would have to, she's saying that you'd have to make a specific justification if you add this into your shoreland zoning, so you'd have to distinctly identify why you're going to regulate the user rather than the use, and I'm not sure what the answer to that question is. It also doesn't affect um, projects that have already gone through planning board and been approved. So anything that's out there currently, um, this wouldn't this wouldn't have an effect. And I'm, I'm not quite sure. My recommendation would be to, to table it. Did, we need, did they need to come up with some other reason? I, I should know this. I was there at the time. But do we, do we need to come up with some other reason to approve that fire station that we needed to put municipal use in? He wasn't clear on that, and he said it was quite a while ago, so I think well, that, that, yeah, it was a little bit. What's odd about that is it went into the municipal use table in the Shoreland Zone. Mm -hmm. The fire station isn't in the Shoreland Zone. Mm -hmm. It's in Village Residential. But there was, yeah. was there another proposal for a different fire I station? I think there yeah, was something on 302. Uh, no, it was supposed to be across yeah. the street. Oh, well, that, made, that makes sense. If it was going to go across the street, then it would make sense. Yeah. So, Jim. I got another curveball for you. I know you didn't want to get out here too early. If you go on page 66 of 70 in the definitions, shoreland zone, public facilities, another definition yeah. we have which is never used anywhere. So 
What page you looking at? 66, 66 of 70. It's not in the land use table. It's different than the land use table. It's public places there. <laughs> Look at the definition of public facility. What are we looking at? Public facility? Yeah. First. Public facility anywhere else? No. Just that's the only place it shows up. It's the only place it shows up. And if you go to the land use table, it's not even public facility, it's public places over there. Because that's probably what's in the model ordinance. I don't know. Maybe. So I don't know if that definition is one that you might want to just change to, or, or change the use table, or, or, you know, that's the other option you could have. Instead of having municipal use, you could have public facility. That actually is a very good suggestion. Well, that public facility seems to cover everything that municipal yeah. use covers, doesn't it? Right. So, so instead of having municipal use on the table, put public places. Except it defines the use and not the user. Right. Facilities, you mean? Exactly. Public uses. Oh. No, it's public facility here. Right. And then the table use public we uses? Use, or just say use public? Public, fac public facility instead of municipal use. But we don't want to define the user, right? Isn't that what we're trying to get away from? So we, if we go with public facility, we're not, def we're not defining the user, are we? Well, but that gets back to the, the again, no. any other municipality could come in and say this is a public use. Exactly. Or, cause or individual. Because it says yeah. in the public facility, it says governmental body or public entity. But I, I'm still, I still don't really understand how we can stop a, another municipal coming in if they own the property. Right. It's their right to develop it in accordance with the ordinances. How can you say that no municipal can't do it, but a private person can? Well, and in particular, if they're choosing a use that is allowed right. or, you know, by special I mean, permit in that district and is simply owned by a municipal I don't see how that, can, I don't see how that can work. I think my heartburn is more you've got something in the use table that's undefined. Yeah. And right. I think, so I'm agreeing with you, is there's, you got, we have two choices, define it or get rid of it. Yeah. Because... I think being or undefined change, is causing more trouble. Or place municipal we, use in your table with public, public, uses, with public, public facility. Right, right, but I'm going back to just the municipal question. The municipal yeah. use right. question. Right. It's right. undefined, so it either needs to be defined or removed. Right. I think it should be removed. Right, I would agree. I agree. And then go to the public facility facility in the land use table. Yep. And move that over to land use. Okay. What do we think? Greg? It's yep. simple, it's easy, and it's, you know... We're not going, going to murky the water. Bruce? Trying to find section 14 in the actual table. And what, what page is the table? It's on page 13, uh, 12 and 13 of 70. I think that's not going to be right. Where are you? Close, right. Close to the beginning. What's the difference between public facility and public and private recreational areas? Public facility doesn't have to be used for recreation. Public facility, but not limited to buildings, property, recreational roads, which are owned, leased, or otherwise operated. Any facility is public facility. Find recreation facilities. So. And, and you're saying you don't think public facility is anywhere else in the document in the shoreline? I don't think so. No. No. I think we did a search with Danielle. Hmm. That's perhaps we cut and paste all which, these years. Which, yeah. which no definition you're asking? Why is defined public facility? Yeah, I was wondering if it was in anywhere else in the document. 
I don't know if it's part of the model ordinance or not. Maybe. Because 23 deals with minimum structure development. Public facility will allow any building or structure. Mm -hmm. We're not changing anything by the name. Do we no. have to go to, through all the ordinance process? I think just be an administrative change? Good question. Um, okay. I think any change to the Shoal and Zone needs to go through the DEP the for their approval. The state has to approve the change. Mm -hmm. it's a which I think they would in this case, but yeah, I think we clarifying. I don't know whether we need to do a warrant article on it for this small of a change. I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so either. But um, we can check with the town attorney on that before we draft up a warrant article. Okay. But it seems like this works. What is puzzling to me is why they felt in 2000 public facility that was in the ordinance, why that didn't cover it for a fire station. I, I just don't see why they needed to put in municipal into the table. I, d I don't get that. Maybe we'll never know. I don't either. I don't, I don't remember. I was on the board back then. Yeah, I don't remember or either. Or is it? Or is it? Or is you want it? No. <coughs> All right. So where are we? Waiting on attorney's opinion, I guess. <coughs> So to are, we, are we in agreement that we're going to drop oh, municipal yeah. use? We're going to yes. use a uh, public facility, and then we're going to investigate how we're going to have to go about doing that. Is that yeah. pretty much yeah. sum it up? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good. All right. We need to do a motion. Yep. I don't think we need a motion for that. We're not really. We just <laughs> kind of we just going to put the ball in motion to see how we're going to do <laughs> it, and then we'll make the motion. Okay. So yeah, I, think I, I think I'll just. I think I'll. So if I'm getting you correctly, Bob, we will check with the town attorney. <laughs> We'll report back to you whether we need to do a warrant, then you will vote whether to do it and send it to the selectmen or vote to do an administrative change through the DEB. Correct. Got it. Steve, if I can request one little, one small little tiny job for the planners. Uh -oh. Is there any way we can go through this table and the definitions and make sure, and then also the um, site plan review table, just so we can make sure everything's consistent because here's one that popped up again. We hadn't. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it may be worth some time to have someone go through and. We have do done that. that a couple of times. Yeah. It's it just, I think it's just so convoluted. It's just it, I don't scary. think you can ever I mean, exhaust every possible solution. It's, right. That's the problem. It's like, what can, you do, what can I do with my property? That's a, the question I hear all the time. And there's a gazillion things you could do, depending on. Well, I think Steve's just talking about making the language all match up. I know. Right, I like that. Yeah. I don't know if we can have to think of all the... I think we get pretty close. I think it'd be easy to go from the table to the definitions, but it might be more difficult to go from the definitions There's to a table. The table. There's a lot of definitions, I think, that are kind of... They may show up somewhere in the ordinance, but maybe not in the table. So. Right. Or yep, I mean, which we've already run into. Right. You moving on? Yes. All right. Um, accessory apartments. Um, Chris and I, the la at the last point that we discussed this, um, Chris and I were going to get together and work through um, some changes on this, and we did that. Um, we went through and developed a accessory apartment definition, and that's on the first page of this memo at the bottom. And um, basically, it's um, half of it contains existing language, kept the 700 square feet, excluding stairways, um, detached or attached or detached language. And then the last um, sentence and a half here is added on for clarity. And I, I think you, you guys need to make a decision if you want to keep that. It says, and located on the same parcel with a single family dwelling, the apartment shall contain a kitchen and a bathroom, which are separate from and not used in common with the principal dwelling unit. That's typical language that I'm seeing for um, similar terms. Chris, does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then the bulk of the, originally, like we talked about, this 
was actually in the definition section and not at all in the body of the ordinance. So we've trimmed that definition, amended it, and, and that's proposed for the definition section. But then the rest of the language is actually proposed for a new section Z in the minimum st uh, Article 9 minimum standards. Um, and that is on the second page. And um, this first paragraph is the existing definition. That's the way it stands now. And the proposed, the second part of this is the proposed language. Um, the highlighted portions are the changed areas. Um, so one of the yep. things that we did was we changed the lot coverage from 30% to 15%. And that's basically to be consistent with um, shoreland zoning and the other aspects of the land use ordinance. Um, we moved some sentences around. I think we, we talked at the last meeting about the septic issue. Um, we actually just reorganized the sentences and I think it was backwards. So if you look at the top, um, let's see, where does it talk about this? Um, okay. If the total number of bedrooms or potential bedrooms exceed by more than one, the number of bedrooms that the existing system is designed for a replacement or expanded system shall be installed before occupancy, and then it goes on from there. We changed it around and now it reads, if the total number of bedrooms or potential bedrooms increases by one, a replacement or expanded system shall be designed and recorded in the registry of deeds. If the total number of bedrooms or potential bedrooms exceed by more than one, the number of bedrooms that the existing system is designed for, a replacement or expanded system shall be installed before occupancy. Get much clearer than that. So it was really just a reorganization. And that mirrors uh, state subsurface yeah. wastewater rules. And, and those are, that's the only changes there. So it's, it's. I got one question. Um, I think you need to, on the first part where, where you're exceeding the bedroom by one, I think that has to be exceeding what the system is designed for. So I can right, take, exactly. I think my, it's, it's, it's not clear. My house is a two bedroom house. I've got a five bedroom septic. Right, right. So if I put in a one bedroom apartment, why do I have to provide another design? I can, I've still got room for three of three bedrooms in my current system. See what I'm saying? Kind of assuming they're already at their capacity for bedrooms, but there okay. may be situations where they aren't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had raised that point before that if the system is existing, is designed for a larger number than the house plus what you're adding, this language still suggests that they need to expand the system, which is not really you know called for. In all cases. Well, it, yeah. I think when it says potential bedrooms, that's covering it. Because if you've got a two-bedroom home and you've got a system designed for three, that's the extra potential bedroom. But I have to take mine. It's designed for five. And I've got a two-bedroom house. I think there's probably a way to... So we would put in exceeds the number... Of bedrooms, the system is designed, designed for. Designed I think you need that for. system designed for in both, yeah, that's, that's in both situations. That's yeah. all I'm saying. <coughs> that's a simple fix. Yeah. Yep. So, did the proposed changes? Was it, was it impact? Are we changing anything that's going to that actually is impacting the way someone is going to be able to develop? Um, we are changing the lot coverage in this specific. Thirty. But that 15. was inconsistent but with the rest of the shoreline zone. Right. We're right. actually making it compliant. Uh, compliant with shoreline zoning and the town's own lot coverage requirements. Okay. I don't know how it ever got in there at thirty percent because we have fifteen percent in all zones. So even if they were to go through a process process they'd still have they'd still hit that 15% That's correct. at mm -hmm. some point so they're not they're not losing um, anything they'd still have to adhere to the lower number okay 15% because it's more restrictive right? yeah so we really need to add that clarifying language of yeah. that the existing system is designed for we need also to stick that language in the next sentence if the total number of bedrooms Correct. Or potential bedrooms increases by one, a replace more expanded system mm -hmm. shall be designed. So this, this, this memo. It's already in there.
Did you hand this, did you hand this one yeah. out? Feels like it. There was something we just got handed out today. No, it should have been in your packet. There was an the old memo and a newer memo. Yeah, it's in there, uh -huh. in the newer one. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, it's in the second sentence, just not the first sentence. All right, so we okay with that? Good. And Stephanie, you're okay with what we need? Yep. All right. Let's keep going. That's it. What about fees and penalties? Oh, that was from uh, us and staff. Oh. oh. Okay. So in certain areas of the ordinance, as we move through it, there are actual like fee numbers that are suggested, and they haven't been caught or weeded out over the years. And the hope is to go through the ordinances and revise them so it will say, as set by the selectmen per the fee schedule. But in the meantime, we would like to edit this overall, the fees and penalty ordinance to say, basically, if you find a fee in the schedule, the fee schedule will supersede it. So that, that way, if there's a conflicting number, the newer number prevails. So until we can... Until it, okay. Because, right, you know what I mean, I tried to do a fee schedule search, like a fee search yep. of the ordinance, and unfortunately we used several different words to, like, money, penalties, fees, <laughs> you know, payment. So it wasn't very easy, and rather than filling the ordinance up with, I mean, filling this warrant up with a whole bunch of them, I'd rather just come forward next year with a, a full list that takes care of them all at once. So if that's all right with you. And take any mention of actual dollar amounts out of the ordinance and just say go see the fee schedule. Correct. Yeah, okay. It's much sense. cleaner that way and also it, it helps us to stay more it's consistent with the time. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then yes. I think Jim had stuff regarding... Um, yeah. I, added, I took a shot stuff. at um, handling the site plan amendments. Mm -hmm. and gave you a whole bunch of new language in there. What Chris and I have seen is, you know, we're getting site plans returning. Mr. Greep is actually one of those types of plans. Um, it was unfortunate, but based on what we had, you know, we, he was forced to come back to the board. Where clearly that's something that you know staff could easily have handled. Yep. Um, but there was no tools in motion to allow us to do that. So we put together here um, we've got four different types of plan amendments. Obviously, minor site plan amendments and major site plan amendments would come back to the board. Uh, de minimis review actually would most likely be done by Chris with probably just my, you know, oversight. Um, and the other one would be minor staff review, which Chris and I would both review. Um, the other thing would be all, um, any amendment, any plan amendment after five years would be processed as a new application. Just because of the timetable, the board's probably turned over, yeah. familiarity's gone. Uh, we just felt also from a review standpoint, you know, no one's going to remember what we did five years ago, so we're all going to invest quite a bit of time into this, so it should be treated as a new application, regardless of, of, of the revision or change. Um, but just quickly going through this, obviously, this is the Article 10 Site Plan Review, and I just gave you the whole, the whole piece of the article that deals with Site Plan Review, and I added in three amendments to Site Plan. Then we had A, which was de minimis reviews, a site plan amendment that includes revisions to a previously approved plan, that includes minor field and structural revisions that are considered incidental and pose no adverse effects to the site plan approval and can be addressed by the code enforcement officer. Oops, there should be an and. And shall be reviewed and approved in a place death is de minimis amendment. Then I just kind of put a little blurb in there, such document shall be dated, stamped, and noted with a letter of acceptance by staff, oops, again another typo, to the applicant and stored in the project file. No public notices will be required. Okay. It's pretty much the same with minor staff uh, plan reviews. We just kind of up the, you know, the uh, requirement, um, it's just orientation, modifying a building revising landscape or buffers, but essentially keeping the modification that keeps the area or less than the structural revisions. Or that maintain the minimal intent of the previous approved site plan requirements. Um, again, um, 
We would require a public notice for that. You would require? Would, would not. You would not. No. Only under minor site plan amendments and major site plan amendments would we require um, the require the public notices. And actually, minor site plan amendment would be treated just like a minor site plan review by the planning board. And major site plan amendments would be treated like a major site plan with the board. But just give some clarity because people come in and they, you know, oh, I'm coming in for an amendment. Well, actually, they're you know, developing half the site all over again. You know, so. I understand by legally it is amended site plan, but we have to have tools in our ordinance just say no, it gets treated as a whole new site plan review. Okay. And we're just trying to create some thresholds in this so it can help us in some consistency with, with applicants. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for something like David here tonight, you know, I mean, it was unfortunate he had to come to the board because it's time consuming. Uh, and some of those small things you don't need to be burdened with either. So where would, where would you have, where do you see David's falling in here? In this? His would have fallen under um, minor staff review because it was a building orientation. And our other one, the uh, Port Har the Harbor Marine, where would you have seen that fall? Uh, I didn't even consider that one. Would you think it that was, one? I thought that was a that new was application. A new one. Oh, that was a new application. Yeah, yeah, that was over five years. Yeah, so five years, been, right. right. Okay. Um, and the one that you have, well, will be coming forward to you the next meeting would have been minimal, probably minor site, amend, site plan amendment as well. Okay. So they would have, that one would have come back to the board likely anyway, mm -hmm. just because there's so many improvements with the back of that lot. Right. But again, uh, just give some consistency because somebody just looks at the, the building factor on the site plan review and they think they can automatically go to staff. Well, there's other pieces to that that go into effect. That and we always have the right to move it up regardless. Right. Yep. That was my, my question. You're saying the one that's coming up would go under, are we saying is it? Minor site plan is amendment. Is it B or is it C? C. C? Okay. And it's not clear that C and D automatically go to the planning board or are these? They do because under minor review, they go automatically to okay. the planning board. All right. And we can put, you know, if you want, I can put planning board in there. But if you follow that article 10B2, it's automatically okay. to the planning board. Fine. Right. Oh, that's good, Jim. You got another typo, Jim, just uh, in that C, right near, right near the end. Okay. Well, I'll, we'll go through. I put this together quickly just to give you something to, to kind of look at tonight, but we can clean it up. Yep, yeah, I see it. All right, any comments? I've been through the, the whole memo and compared to what's in there, it seems to make a lot of sense to me. Frankly, I think it's heading in the right direction. Good. Anyone else? You okay? We'll proceed. All right, let's go. Let's do it. All right. Uh, so our remaining schedule for ordinance updates. Have we covered everything. So last piece of paper here. So our next meeting, December tenth, warrant review and vote to send to public hearing. You may have a busy agenda that yeah. night, so um, there's a strong to almost certain uh, that Fry Island will be back. I'm not certain whether they'll have their DEP approval, but I think they're at a point where they're ready to come back. Obviously, you're going to have the Myers uh, amended site plan coming before you as well. Mm -hmm. um, Fry Island's always very time consumption. <laughs> so. I don't know if you want to start um, this earlier or. It's up to the board. Well, when do we? When is our? Normally we work backwards. Right. I just want maybe you want to do like a six o'clock or six thirty workshop because I don't know. Oh, and get this over with early. Get this over with at seven. Whatever we're, where we're at, we stop at seven and just go right to the public hearing Sounds or like extension of Fry Island. That's that's a that's, that's rather you can make rather it another night. Yes. Rather yeah. than another at night. Six o'clock start with. So I don't know if you want six or six thirty. Or try to do it afterwards. What do, we, what do we have left to do at the next meeting? Really, just going well, over actually, one language. We probably right? could do it in half. Hour. We probably could do it in half hour. Six thirty. Yeah. I was say because uh, like it, by this point you guys have reviewed it quite a few times. So it's literally just double checking just, and making yeah. sure that it looks right yeah. for your public hearing. Right. So. Yeah. Well, we do. I mean, just. Okay. Let's go six thirty. We'll do a half hour. All right with the board. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we'll, do, we'll start next one at 6.30, we'll do nothing but the or, get the ordinance done. And then at 7 o'clock we can start with the regular meeting for Friday. Sounds good. Um, you going to hold everyone out? Or they, I guess they can come in. We're just doing the ordinance. No, they can come in. 
Yeah, it's still public meeting. Still public meeting. Yeah. Just for the public, I know. Did you notify them at seven? Or? Hmm? Do we have a public notice for that one? No, we don't. Do we? For what one? For mm -hmm. one if it comes back. Well, we'll be a public hearing one because it be a, a major. We can, yeah, you change. can just say it's seven, and then we'll just you know we yeah. can take a break if we have to. So, are we considering it a major change? At this point, no. What so I've seen so far, no. But I have not made a formal submission, so I don't know for certainty, but. My I'm 99, 44, 100 sure that it's not going to be a substantial change. You don't think it will be? I don't think it will be. They've, they've, they're going through with that driveway as we suggested. Okay. And they've made, they made some changes at the entrance, but it's nothing that's substantial to warrant public, new public hearing. You can accept public comment any time if you want, but it won't be notified, won't be a, uh, be notifications for public hearing. Okay. No, I just didn't want it to be notified as no. a public hearing. If they were going to do the whole leg and entryway and everything else, then definitely would have come in, as a, but they're keeping the orientation the same. Okay. Myers will be a public hearing, though. Um, yeah, but that, that shouldn't generate right, very no. much interest. I don't think so, no. Okay. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, Daniel, when you put the agenda together for the next meeting, do you have any way of flagging the 6.30 start time I in red or high? <laughs> 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 Bruce has just put like 25 font yeah. or something. I'll, <laughs> I'll send out so several off. notices as well as make I'm notes on the website call. for the public. <laughs> 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 send you an alarm clock for yes. Bruce. <laughs> I'll call you. How's that? There you go. <laughs> We're bringing a cell phone now. I'll move your drive. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Motion pass.